I hope <laughs> for Buffalo, Buffalo Trace Steak uh, that this, uh, that the, the one that I prefer, is the 10 year. But uh, the nose was definitely, in, I won't say definitely, but no, yeah, the nose definitely better on this. The palate way superior on this. Welcome to the blind battle of the Buffalo Trace 90 Proofers. I'm your host Sam, without a beard, and this is Whiskey and SV. Well, uh, thanks for joining me, folks. And uh, if you're an existing subscri subscriber, I'm very sorry if I look weird. Uh, it's because I was trying to trim my beard yesterday and I uh, messed it up, and this is uh, what I ended up with. So, uh, wife is not very happy, which is um, uh, counterintuitive. You would think uh, that your lady should be happy that uh, it's all smooth now, but apparently not. Anyways, I digress. Um, in tonight's episode, we'll be doing a blind tasting of three Buffalo Trace products. Now, um, there are probably products, if you like bourbon, that you're already pretty familiar with. And as you know, Buffalo Trace is one of the, mm, well, uh, most famous and uh, most successful bourbon producers in the United States. Uh, and, uh, well, all bourbon producers have to be in the United States, but, uh, you know. Um, but uh, recently they did a collaboration with a guy called Chris Stapleton, which is an eight-time Grammy award-winning artist. Uh, and um, uh, the, the collaboration between, is between Chris Stapleton and Harlan Wheatley, uh, um, which is uh, the master distiller of Buffalo Trace. So the reason why it's called Buffalo, um, and the reason why it is called uh, Blend Number 40 is because apparently the story goes that they did 50 blends and uh, the blend 40 was the best one. So I'm going to read you the marketing material because uh, this, uh, this bottle is getting quite a lot of fanfare and uh, attention and people are already trying to sell it in secondary. I think the MSRP for it is supposed to be $33.99 and um, KL Wines actually had it for $33.99 for quite a while yesterday. But um, I bought this from a local mom and pop store for $40, which, you know, uh, I was a bit uh, miffed uh, that uh, I had to pay more than MSRP, but I wanted to try it to see if it's worth it or not, because people are already trying to flip this in secondary. I'm like, why? Um, anyways, I had to know. So let me read you the marketing material, because I think you'll probably find that interesting. Um, all right. It says, it says the uh, good whiskey is like, good, uh, like a good song. It requires no explanation. One taste should tell you everything you need to know. No one has to tell you how to feel about it. You simply settle in and enjoy. Sure, why not? Um, then you can say that about anything. Uh, for this first of its kind collaboration from Buffalo Trace Distillery, Travelers bring together, uh, Traveler brings together the collective artistry of Chris Stapleton and master distiller Harlan Wheatley. Blend number 40 is the carefully curated result of countless hours of testing and tasting. It's a completely unique combination of whiskeys from award-winning distilleries and exactly what you'd expect from a premium whiskey that speaks for itself. And then it's signed by the Harlan Wheatley and by Chris, Chris Stapleton. Um, well, uh, there you have it, folks. Uh, that is the uh, the bottle that has is getting all the fanfare, the bottle of the day. Um, and uh, it is not a bourbon. So because it is just a, a, um, a you know, a, a mix of a bunch of blend of a bunch of whiskeys. So um, what, what do I want to put it up against, right? So things that are approximately in the same, well, definitely have the same proof, right? Uh, 90 proof, which uh, uh, in, as, as you know, uh, 90 proof means 45% alcohol by volume. And these two other products are from the same distillery, Buffalo Trace. I believe they're both Mashville one. Uh, and um, they are, you know, fan favorites. I think people have uh, tried this uh, and, uh, you know, I think they're in, in the same price range. Actually, they're, they're, MSRP is supposed to be cheaper than the Wheatley, uh, sorry, than the Traveler. Uh, I think the Eagle Rare Tenure is uh, an excellent bottle. Uh, I think the MSRP on this one is $32.99. It used to, maybe I got this one actually from Costco for $26.99. Um, the Buffalo Trace, um, this one, I, I see it regularly at stores at around $20. And uh, it's kind of like the base uh, opening, uh, you know, the kind of baseline. Uh, entry whiskey for Buffalo Trace. Okay, so um, without further ado, I'm going to pour samples into each one of these uh, glasses to do the blind to see if this Traveler whiskey is any good and where it stands next to 
it's um, well, I, I would say probably more well known, but also um, higher quality. I would say maybe <laughs> uh, that could be controversial. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pour number one into this one. Uh, make sure that I okay, don't mess that up. Okay, so that first one, number one, is going to be the eagle rare. I'm gonna have all the faces facing in so they don't uh, get confused. All right. A uh, little spoiler here. I, I did try this uh, yesterday, as you can see, it's open, and I have to say I was not uh, really impressed, to be fair. But um, it was in the middle of a session trying a bunch of things, so uh, this one I got a bit too much in this. So let me pull. Okay, so yeah, as I said, the the purpose of this episode for me is to understand whether the um you know the buffalo trace uh, new entry that it, that's gonna all this fanfare is any good and um, yeah i'm not sure i i think uh, well uh when i tried it uh, in the middle of a tasting session i didn't really think it's that great but um uh, we'll see we'll see how it st stacks up uh, you know next to the other ones that are well probably around the same price range maybe slightly uh yeah slightly cheaper actually um and uh, given that this product specifically, the, the Eagle Rare um, tenure, is a tenure product, an age, age stated product, um, uh, yeah, I would, um, I, 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 I don't think I'm gonna find that it's worse. But let's see. Okay, let's go. So we'll uh, just uh, do that. So I'm gonna start by this one. There's definitely that Buffalo Trace characteristic to it, like a Mashville 1 characteristic a little bit, uh, but I'm not sure because there's a little bit of a sourness, uh, which comes with age, I guess. So I'm not sure. Let me try this one. Mm, much more Buffalo Tracey, uh, Mashville 1. So I actually don't know what Mashville this is. I assume that these two are both Mashville 1, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not really getting much of a mash bill one on this. But I'm getting more oak on it, interestingly. Okay, I'm going to go back because I, I want to make sure that, given the notes that I just had, uh, it's not just a matter of uh, me exhausting specific things. Um, specific, I guess, uh, nosing uh, um, receptors. Yeah, definitely getting Buffalo Trace one on that. Less so. I think out of the noses, uh, probably this one is my favorite. There's more complexity. There's more sweetness. This one is kind of like a baby version of that, maybe, on the nose. This one I get like way more oak, but just not the same like Buffalo Trace sweetness. And the oak kind of comes across as like very um, youngish oak. Okay, I, I, or at least like not charred, you know, that's that's kind of like, I, it, it feels like more, yeah, if you put something in like oak that's not charred, these kind of, you know, they're they're more darkish, more sweet caramel notes, this 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 feels a bit more like the, the oak wasn't charred, at least as much. Yeah, this is uh, my least favorite notes. Okay, so I'm going to start from here. Yeah, very buffalo trace. Um, nice sweet arrival. Um, then like a bunch of uh, baking spices, like the caramel and the vanilla are there. But then baking spices, and um, there's this like sweet lingering aftertaste. Um, you know, I, I think like a little bit of fruitiness to it as well. Like nondescript kind of type uh, fruits. Um, yeah, it's a very, very nice product. I really like it. Very typical bourbon, uh, like if you think about what's a stereotypical bourbon, especially like an entry uh, kind of uh, bur bourbon, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great one. Let's go for this one. Comparatively less spicy. Oh. Yeah, comparatively less spicy. Um, I do want to say like it probably, it feels like it, there, there's a little bit more oak in there as well. Um, 
But the difference is not that big, to be honest. This, this nose is more aromatic. Um, I like the spices on this a little bit more, to be honest. It's definitely more spicy, for sure. Um, I get um, this kind of fizziness coming back uh, with the baking spices. Um, yeah, this is definitely it was less spicy. Okay, let me go to this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a completely different one. I, I would be surprised if this is not the, the Traveler. I'm going to guess so far. I think this um, this is the 10 year. This is the regular Buffer Trace. And this is the Traveler. That's, that's what I'm guessing so far. But let me try this and give you some tasting notes. So definitely on the nose, like again, as I said, this, it feels like it's the dominant note I get on this. I mean, there's some big, obviously... Actually, there's not even that, that much vanilla on this. A little bit, but it's just like the oak comes around, comes uh, across as the most prominent note, but like a very young and uh, on um, not not a toasted oak, basically not not a um, the in, the inside of the barrel wasn't as toasted at least uh, it feels. Okay, let's see. Yeah, the the palate is also like the palate feels a lot more like a bourbon. It does have like those kind of like um, uh, vanilla and caramels. It's not as sweet as the other two. Uh, the spices are not as, um, as um, you know, prominent. Um, that oaky, like, tartness comes out um, a lot more than the other two. There's some mineralness. And honestly, there's like a little bit of a weird taste that I don't... Um, I can't really describe. It's like this sort of tart... Um, I, I, it reminds me of like tart wood, um, but I I don't really know. Like if you if you've ever had um, one of those Japanese um, uh, bowls that are made out of wood, and uh, if you lick those, <laughs> kind of like that, but like a white one. I don't know. It's weird. I have to say I am not a huge fan of this. Um, it's okay. Uh, uh, it is definitely not. I I you know I. As soon as I got this, by the way, I opened it because I wanted to see if it is something that I want to go get back up. So because I knew it's going to get tatered and it's going to get like butt out. But um, yeah. Okay. So let, let me do a reveal because I just want to, I want to make sure that uh, I got those right. Um, actually, one more run quick. I want to make sure that I got these right. No, I definitely prefer this. It has more sweetness to it. Interesting. I'm not really sure which one is which. I would say... There's, first of all, there's not a huge difference between these two, especially when you compare it to this. But I have a preference for this. I think there is more, more of the sweets there and um, a little bit more complexity, to be honest. Not on the palate, but not on the nose, but definitely on the palate. Okay, I need one more minute. Yeah, this has a, a little bit of a bitter um, tinge to the, end, to the end of it, which I'm not a huge fan of. This is much sweeter. I mean, there's spices there, don't get me wrong. It's not like a sweet bourbon, uh, just, just sweetness. This is like lots of spices. But the spices are mouth-watering, and the sweetness is there in a way that doesn't... Um, I, I don't get like that uh, kind of, um, you know, bitter, bitter note, uh, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I would say um, this is uh, my favorite. I'm going to guess... I don't know what to guess, to be honest. Um, I don't know if the bitterness I'm getting in this is because of the oak or because of the youth. Um, I hope, <laughs> for Buffalo Trace sake, uh, that this, uh, that the, the one that I prefer, is the 10-year. But uh, the nose was definitely, I want to say definitely, but no, yeah. The nose, definitely better on this. The palate, way superior on this. So I'm going to say final answer, 10, uh, regular Buffalo Trace, and uh, Traveler. Okay, let's go in this order. So this first one, this is two. So that is the Traveler. Good. OK, what is this? This is three. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so this is um, three was the Buffalo Trace, which means this should be one. And it is. OK, good. So the one that I preferred uh, on a palette uh, was the Eagle Rare Tenure. OK, so there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And uh, if you are tatering after this, I would say Mm, add MSRP, sure, why not? Uh, I won't even pay $40 for it, though, and I don't need a backup. Uh, that is my 
stands on it. <laughs> so you do with that what you do, what you want. Uh, as you know, um, taste is a subjective thing, and I am uh, not an expert by any means. But hopefully, if you watch my episodes and you agree with me uh, more often than not, then this could be an uh, indication for you to see if you want to go chase this down and try it, or try it at the bar first and then see what you think. Anyways, okay, thank you so much. Uh, happy New Year again. And I uh, hope everyone has a really great, successful, and healthy new year. So see you next time. Cheers.